Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the all new 2024 BMW X2 xDrive 28i. Huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing this SUV for me today. Definitely take a look at their website. That link is down in the description. This X2 is finished off in Cape York green metallic. MSRP is just over $50,000. And this is powered by the two liter inline four cylinder turbocharged engine. It's paired to a seven speed automatic pumping out 241 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. That power sent through the xDrive all-wheel drive system, propelling this 3,800-pound SUV from zero to 60 in 6.2 seconds. It has a top speed of 149 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 14.3 gallons. You'll expect to see around 24 miles per gallon in the city, 33 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 106 inches. Its overall length is 179.3. It has a width of 72.6, a height of 62.6, and its ground clearance measures in just over 8 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for the all-new X2, let's start off with the kidney design for the grille. On this model, it's finished off in brushed aluminum. Now the sensor right in the middle is for the adaptive cruise. There's also a camera off-center there, and then some really nice designs for the rest of that mesh, along with all the cutouts to provide cooling to that engine. Now this also has a set of LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals. The turn signals have a unique little blip to them, which is kind of cool to see. And then in the entire lower section, there's all the parking sensors, as well as more mesh, and then there's cutouts too on the far edges to provide better airflow and aerodynamics. I think it gives it a really cool look, especially with the black that goes up in between the body colored work there with more gloss black for those edge pieces there. And then there's two lines that come down the hood with the BMW badge right in the middle. Gives it a really cool, almost sports car vibe for this SUV. Now, as we work our way to the side, this has a really unique set of wheels with the two-tone design to them, that multi-spoke pattern, base brakes for this model. This also has the premium package as well as the driver assistance pro package. That equals about six grand worth of options. Part of that is the power folding side mirrors where there's also the turn signal and the camera. The full moon roof is a part of that package as well. There's more goodies for the interior, but the rest of the window trim is finished off in gloss black. There's also a cool intricate pattern running in the plastic side skirt that hopefully you can tell just sticks out a little bit to give it a cool look. And the X2 has that sports car or coupe-like design in the back. If you're not a fan of that and you want a little bit more traditional of an SUV, you can go with the X1, but the X2 has that cool sports car look with that steeply raked rear glass, leading all the way to this gloss black spoiler where there's a camera right there. There's LED taillights as well as all the parking sensors in the lower section. And then more of that body colored is in the lower diffuser with the plastic trim that runs right through the middle just to separate it like you saw up front. Now this does have remote start, so you can use the key fob to do that, and then you can use the key fob to shut it off as needed. You can also use the key fob or just push the BMW badge up, and that is how you can gain access to the power lift gate. Now, this is a relatively small vehicle. This is the smallest SUV that BMW makes. However, the interior still seems surprisingly large. There's a bin over on the passenger side, storage net on that left side, you can't even lift up the floor where there is the spare tire. You could place some other items in there. You could remove that spare and add some more items if you need to. And you can fold down the back seats. All three are individual, so you do have to fold them down individually, but that gives you a lot more interior space depending on the items that you have. And then I will say the one downside is just that steeply raked rear glass. So if the storage in the cargo area isn't something necessary for you, you still have a lot of space. You're just missing a little bit of height, especially when you compare it to the X1. But that's why there's two different options depending on what works best for you. And then the two buttons in the back will close or lock the vehicle. Now there's no proximity handle on the back. So as it's locked right now, I'll just work my way to the front to unlock it and that will unlock the back door so you can set that up which is nice now for this interior very beautiful materials with all the leather and stitching Harman Kardon is a part of that package as well there's a lot of storage in the lower section and a really cool design to that grab handle with the trim accent that runs around it as well as the hollow design for that release handle and then the black leather works its way to these back seats we're at 5 foot 10 let's hop in this is a very small vehicle as well the roof line is about at the level of my neck, so it's it's pretty small. But at five foot ten, 
I have plenty of space once we hop inside. There's storage nets behind both front seats, climate adjustments with auxiliaries, a little bit of storage down below. And at my height, maybe half inch or so above my head, this is the seat all the way reclined. If you pull on this lever, you can't actually lock it up. No one's going to be sitting like this. So you really just have the one setting here. It's comfortable for this size. It is very comfortable. A little small feeling, but you could have three people back here. There's the armrest and two couplers in the middle. And then this is your visibility. So that is a pretty big pillar, especially with the design of that roof. But you can see out of the back, you have the windows, of course, and then your side mirror adjustments from the front seat. Now, as we take a look at the front seats now, door panel is just like the rear. However, there's all the memory seating controls, as well as the power folding side mirror adjustments, all the window adjustments, and a lift gate release, and then plenty more storage, and a really cool design that separates the leather from the release handle there. The front seats are automatic, and they have a great design to them. And like I said, it's a low vehicle, so it's almost like you're hopping into a sedan. But now we have the solid black leather steering wheel with more brushed aluminum accents. Cruise control settings are located on the left. On the right side, there's volume and then shortcuts to your music, Bluetooth voice commands, and then a few controls for the gauge cluster. So let's start this up. That brushed aluminum button is down below. We can bring this to life. And looking at the digital gauge cluster on the left side, there's miles per hour. Right side is the tack along with what gear you're in. And then if you push on the buttons on the right side of the steering wheel, you can scroll through a lot more content. So you can pull up the map along with the compass, look at your driver assistance, any trip data, and then you can pull up the miles per hour front and center. There's also a few different layouts that you can go into just depending on how you would like to view this information. And then the last one is for the head up display. For the head-up display, there's also a few settings. There's sport view, which will show you your RPM along with miles per hour and the speed limit sign. Assisted view is for your driver assistance, of course, and then standard view reduces it to miles per hour and the speed limit sign. So not too configurable, but it definitely gives you the info that you need front and center. On this left side, there's all the headlight adjustments along with some really cool trim accents with the brushed aluminum. And then as we work our way to the infotainment system, you'll notice too that this is the all new screen that BMW has been incorporating into their vehicles. It's actually been shrunken a little bit for this interior. So I think it looks very nice. Now on this left side, we have a few controls and shortcuts to get into your media as well as your phone. And you can even get into the navigation as well. In the lower section, this is where you can get home. So you can get to this split screen here where on the left side, you can scroll through some of this information and then the right side currently shows the navigation. Now, if I push on the four squares, this is where you can get into your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, get into all of your climate adjustments, your exterior lighting. You even have drive settings that you can go into, look at all of this information, as well as the iconic sound. So that will pipe in some exhaust notes just to make this sound a little bit nicer. And you have a few others that you can go through depending on what you need to see. There's also a shortcut into the climates. So when you uh, turn those on, you can go through all this information, fan speed, everything like that. There's also uh, shortcuts to your temperatures on both sides. And when you do have that on, you can gain access to your heated seats as well as your heated steering wheel. Now underneath that, there's more of that trim accent that leads all the way to the passenger side with two air vents. There's also one air vent in the middle, some defrosters too. Wireless charging is at the lower section. There's also a clip here that you can hold your phone in place. Two cup holders are behind that along with some auxiliaries. And then this actually has a floating design for all these controls. There's plenty of storage down below, making it very nice for your front seat passengers. And then behind the engine start stop button, we have the gear selector. So push that forwards and the backup camera will appear. This model also has that 360. So you can pull up a lot of angles, including that 3D view and you have the shortcuts to see around the entire vehicle. You can also go with another top-down view. You can wash the cameras too, so if they get dirty, you can quickly do that. Drive is going to be all the way to the back, and then if you do that one more time, it looks like that is for a low-range setting. There's no park button, so just push on the electronic parking brake, and that is how you can put this into park. There's also a shortcut to the camera system, as well as a shortcut to my modes. So you can go through these three modes, 
just depending on your mood for the day and what you would like to see. It does change a little bit of the throttle response as well. So that is great. And then behind that, there's a shortcut to your driver assistance and your chassis as I showed earlier. There's auto hold behind that as well as tuning, power and volume for the radio and hazards. And then by pushing that button in front of the armrest, you can actually open this up towards the passenger. It's pretty thin, so you could put your phone, pens, any smaller items like that. And of course you have the storage down in the glove box there. Up top, there's garage door buttons underneath the rear view mirror and then all the dome lights and the controls for that full moonroof. And then this is a look at visibility from the driver's side. You can still see around that pillar using your side mirrors, of course. So it's not the worst for visibility and you can still see over that left side. So now that we're behind the wheel for the all new BMW X2, if you're new to the channel, I actually drove the X1 M35i several weeks ago. And that's pretty much the same car as this minus the back end of the vehicle is completely different and this is the 28i. Now you can get the X2 with that M35i package too. So if you're interested in that, check out that video uh, because I haven't been able to see the M package for this. This is the first X2 that I am seeing in person. And so far it does remind me of the X1 that I was in. And if you're not looking for that next level, the M35 will give you the paddle shifters too. So that way you can drive it a little bit more sporty than you can in this. There's nothing on the back side of the steering wheel here. However, I did mess with this. Going into L, basically the vehicle will automatically downshift for you. So if you need some power, or if you're ready to pass or merge or something like that, put it into L and then it'll automatically downshift and the shifts do get much quicker. So that is pretty impressive to see. I've said this in other BMW review videos as well. Even for a BMW that's not really performance oriented, unless you go the M version of course, and you don't have the paddles, but you still get more of a, a responsive transmission putting it into L. So that is pretty cool. And it's going to rev out a little bit higher there just to give you that performance that you need. Now this is not, I wouldn't say it's a slow vehicle, it's not crazy fast. Zero to 60 is six seconds, which is not bad. It is not bad for this style vehicle, uh, but it's quick. It's something that I wouldn't say is underpowered even with this engine. So let's give it another acceleration here. Maybe a little bit of turbo lag there, but we're up to speed. So a peppy little engine for this. And aside from that, it rides and drives exactly how you would think a BMW would ride. Now there's no adaptive suspension or anything like that, but it's been absorbing all of these bumps very well, but it's very smooth, handles turns well. And with it in that low range setting from second gear, here we go. It is not slow by any means. I am thoroughly impressed. I was extremely impressed with the M version in the X1. And so if, if you're not looking again for that next level, I don't see any issues with the power in this, but this is what it's like to be behind the wheel for the all new BMW X2. Definitely very nice. For the price point, you are getting a small SUV, but you're also getting a luxury brand, something that is going to be very nice to drive. If you're looking for a vehicle like this, we do have some nice materials. I believe there's some other options that you can go with. This one only has two packages on it for the MSRP of right around $50,000. So I believe you could spec this with some other options, just depending on what suits your budget and what you're looking for. If you are doing a lot of city driving perhaps, and you just don't want a large SUV, but you still want something that can be practical, groceries, other items, things like that, nothing too big. I think this is a good option. Turning radius is pretty tight here, so it's going to be very maneuverable in parking lot situations. And then not even a quarter throttle, we're back up to speed. But I love how quiet it is, super comfortable, would make for a great daily driver. We have a lot of tech features that make this very nice so that you can drive it every day and be accommodative with everything that is available. Seats are also in a good position too. I really don't have any complaints with this car. Just aside from the size factor, it's too small for my personal taste. 
but that's going to be a different for everyone. And for its size, I am impressed with not only the room on the inside, but just how it drives and handles in general. That is going to wrap it up though for the all new 2024 BMW X2. Again, check out my X1 M35i review if you wanna see basically this same vehicle with the bigger engine and just how that drives and the performance that that has. But again, huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing this for me today. Check out their website, give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.